Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome to Lifestyle Manifesting. I'm Shannon. On my channel, I discuss manifesting as a lifestyle, every area of your life. Be the director, the designer, the architect of your life. I want to talk about who are you being? Who are you being? Because your reality is a manifestation of you. Your reality is reflecting you. Your reality and everything you're experiencing is a reflection of what's within you. So it's really important that if you want to change something, you change how you see yourself. You change who you are being. Who are you being? If you want to be the person with a seven-figure salary, a seven-figure business, if you want to be someone who has a million dollars, if you want to be someone who has this business that's growing and thriving, you want to be the person who is already in that lifestyle. So you need to think from the version of you who already has that. And the version of you who already has that has certain thoughts. The version of you who has that seven-figured business has the thoughts of your business and how it's thriving and the vision of what you're, who you are in that business. You have thoughts to yourself about who you are and what you feel. And all of that manifests out. When it comes to a specific person, who are you being? <laughs> are you being the person right now who's in the relationship or are you being the person who's not in the relationship? To manifest the relationship, you have to identify as a person who's already in the relationship by having the thoughts that you're already in the relationship by knowing the desire is your, already yours, by knowing who you are. So you focus on your self-concept and you focus on that identity of who you are in order to manifest the things you want. Be the person who has those things. You're not just imagining you have them, you're being that person. You're thinking the thoughts of that person who has those desires. You're consistently affirming. I don't care if it feels delusional, but you are the cause, the world's the effect. If you want to change your life, you have to have new thoughts. The same thoughts you've been having your whole lifetime has just created your reality you're in. If you want to make a change, you have to have new thoughts. And the thoughts need to stem from the self-concept of having your desire, the identity of having your desire. You... <laughs> you, you get clear on who that is. You get clear on what that looks like to you. What does that look like to you? What does it look like to you being in the relationship? What does that feel like being in a relationship? How does your daily, you know, your daily schedule, your daily habits, your daily thoughts, what does that look like? It's not just about listening to me or any coach tell you what to do. You start to get in within, like start to get within, <clears throat> start to get in that character yourself, thinking from that character, developing that character. Feel that through your day from moment to moment, from moment to moment, feel that you have this already. Not that you just have it, but you're the person who has this life. You're the person who has these things in your life. And some of that could be a little bit of an exercise, practicing, practicing feeling that, practicing knowing that, asking yourself questions like, yeah, what would my day be like if I did have this? What would I be thinking if I did have this desire? What would I be thinking about other people? What would I be thinking about that desire? What would I be thinking about myself? So you want to dig a little deeper within to feel that version of you and then consistently be that version of you by having the thoughts of that version of you. That version of you is, is confident. That version of you knows that you're the creator. That version of you knows you're the God of your reality. Those are thoughts you would have. You would have thoughts like, yeah, I'm the God of my reality. I can do this. I'm unlimited. 
sure, I could have a doubt, but I know that I'm infinite and I know I'm unlimited. So, so that would be the thought process. That's just a piece. That's just a piece of it. Your inner conversations, which are the thoughts that you're having through the day, that's what's manifesting and creating your reality. So if you're having the same thoughts, if you're having the similar thoughts about the whole story that's happening that you don't want, then you are just going to be keeping that reality in your existence as an experience. In order to shift and have a different experience, you're having new thoughts. Okay, maybe you've been affirming these new thoughts already. Great. You're affirming these new thoughts. Keep it up. Persist. Stay persistent because there will be a change and there will be reflection in your reality. And I know all of you have seen great reflection in your reality. Keep it up because if something seems like it's going opposite, that is the... That's your opportunity to show yourself that you're in charge. That's your opportunity to remind yourself you're in charge. So even if it feels like it's the opposite or it's not what you wanted, your that's your not chance, but it's like that's the time for you to demonstrate to yourself that you truly are the person who you are with your desire, having your desire. Let's answer some questions. Identify with the person you want to be. Yes, identify with the person you want to be. So you, it, it doesn't mean you're just gonna. Maybe you, maybe you won't decide just in one moment who is that person. That it could feel like it's a little bit of process. Let take out your notebook. Take out a notebook and start getting clear on who is that person. It's not about you're wanting. I mean, you're wanting to be that person. So you're identifying number one that person you want to be. You identify that person first. So, so that's a brainstorming exercise. The brainstorming exercise of who you want to be is, okay, like I said just now, like the thoughts and the feelings. And maybe you want to kind of come up with some circumstances that you would imagine, you know, your how you interact with that circumstance. Like what would you be doing with if you have your desire? What would you be doing? What would your circumstances be? What would your circumstances be if you had your desire? So do your brainstorm. And you might need to do this several times. You might need to do it once. I had a couple people tell me they had to do my course. They went through my self-study course a couple times because they needed to get into that mind frame. Okay, you persist until you have your desire. And by the way, those two people that told me they had to do it twice both manifested their specific person because they kept the repetition and they kept brainstorming. Who is that person? Okay, who is that person you want to be? Now, be that person. Think of like, I was thinking how actors, you know, like the director will say, okay, and, okay, you're thinking about who you want to be, right? And you're thinking who you want to be and action. Now be that person. Like you just go into action. It's like you've embodied that. You've embodied that within you. As you practice the thoughts in the first day, first maybe even couple days, it might feel awkward. It might feel a little, um, yeah, it might not even feel that easy. It might feel awkward. It might feel not true. Well, you have to persist. <laughs> You have to persist in your embodying and being that per version of you. As you consistently do it, you see, you will feel differently within. You'll feel a shift within. You'll feel differently. You'll be looking at the world through a different lens. Do we need to change anything in the physical about ourselves or is it about who we are being in the moment mentally? It's about who you're being in the moment mentally. You don't have to change anything in the physical, but if you if you are so inclined or you have a you have an inspiration to change something then yes go ahead and change it it's understanding and knowing that you're already whole and perfect if you want to change something in the it doesn't mean like i change what do i change about myself in the physical well i still get my hair highlighted i love that i don't have to i could say i'm perfect the way i am but this is what i like and I do find it powerful if you view yourself more as an avatar where you're not like feeling so personal about yourself, but like 
this is an avatar and this now what do we want to do with this avatar or like a skin right when like my kids are playing a video game it's like they chose the skin <laughs> so what skin are you choosing like what body what do you want to do with your skin you know what are you what are you um adding let it be more of that perception like this is fun Okay, it's not like you need to change because you're trying to conform and fit into the world that tells you you're supposed to look like this or look like that or be this or act like this. It's your reality. You get to define how you want the whole reality to look. For also, for example, um, this is a mental example of how you can change mentally. Like I, you don't have to have the ideas of masculine and feminine. That doesn't have to exist in your reality. But if, but I know personally, I like being in my feminine energy. I like masculine to provide for me. I like the masculine to take initiative. So personally, I like that dynamic. So I adopt what I like that currently exists in the world. If I like something, I'm going to adopt that into my mindset and say, oh, I like that. So I'm going to help, that helps myself get into the, the experience that I want. You know, sometimes I've had clients in the past tell me um, they're manifesting a specific person. This is back to, you know, changing your physical, right? I, and I, I had clients a couple, actually a couple years ago, this one client, she was doing so great with her mental diet. And then, you know, we had, we were meeting, um, she did my I had a package at the time, I don't have it right now anymore, but I had a package where it was weekly, a weekly package. So we had we had been working together for a couple weeks and she just didn't understand why she wasn't having movement. As we dug a little bit deeper, we realized that she felt like she needed to lose weight before her partner came in, or before the SP would come in. So even though she was affirming, she say, I feel it and I know it and I feel it. I, I imagine it and I know and I feel that version of me who has my desire. And then when I asked, OK, well, imagine you're standing in front of each other right now. And then she kind of felt like, well, I don't know, because I don't want him to see me like I do want to lose the weight before we get together. OK, so that whole. <laughs> that whole story doesn't align because if she's affirming for the end result and at the same time saying, I don't want him to see me until I lose the weight, she, she already knows within she hasn't lost the weight and she's reflecting a reality where he's reflecting that because that's, that's her truer f f fear and belief within that's reflecting back. Okay. How did she manifest? It was about a month later. How did she manifest her specific person? by accepting who she, she didn't lose the weight, by the way, at, at that time. <clears throat> and I actually haven't talked to her, you know, I um, haven't heard from her, so I'm assuming she's doing great, but she manifested her person without losing the weight. She had to drop that idea of the condition. She had to drop the idea that she needed to lose weight in order to manifest her person. So she, what we did was think through that version of her who says, I accept myself, I appreciate myself, I love myself, I'm already perfect. Because when you decide you're already perfect, the world will reflect that back to you. It doesn't mean you couldn't lose weight at some time. Just don't condition your manifestation. Don't condition like, I need to look better, I need to lose weight. Okay, I need to glow up. I, those are things you can do, but don't let that be part of the condition to get your manifest, to, to have and be the version of you with your manifestation. It is a mental game. It's a mental game because some people may not feel like they want to accept themselves because they feel like they're suppo supposed to look like someone else or something else. So embody and appreciate who you are and love who you are. And that is going to be a game changer in your life. I know personally, when I loved myself and accept myself, I saw a bigger change in my whole reality. Sure, I had a lot of people that always loved and supported me. It didn't matter. Okay. But as I loved myself, appreciated myself, I decided I was the beauty standard. Instead of thinking someone else is the beauty standard, instead of looking at someone else who didn't look like me whatsoever and thinking they were the beauty standard, I just decided I am. And now that, you know, not just now, but 
that started reflecting in my world. It's not like people are telling me I am the beauty standard. I feel that way. I feel secure and I feel sure about myself and I feel good about myself. And I don't feel like I need to do the Botox. Sure, if you want to, go for it. I don't feel like I need to do it. I don't need to do it. Because I know the beauty is from within and radiates out. So so I see that in my, in, within me. But I also appreciate others, right? Equally appreciating others for, for their beauty. Okay, Patty. I'm trying to learn this. I wasn't taught that words and thoughts matter, manifest. Uh, Patty, I didn't know that either. <laughs> Most of us didn't know that. I didn't know that. The only reason I know this is because I lost everything I knew my life to be. I lost it all. I lost the house I was living in. I lost the marriage. I lost it all. I, I was living in my mom's basement with two kids. So I know. I mean, I know what it feels like to feel like I didn't know. I didn't know either. <laughs> but here's what I know now. When I look back and connect the dots... So, so being observant, um, sorry, there's like a fuzzy or something on my eyelash. Observe your reality. And, and it's like you're the cause, the world's the effect, right? When you're understanding thoughts matter, it's, it's because you're the cause and the world's the effect. And when you start to connect the dots of what you were thinking and what you were believing and what happened in your life, you start to connect. You see the d d direct correlation that it's you. It's you. When you change your thoughts about yourself and about how your world, you know, how, who you are in relationship to different things in your world, who are you in relationship to money, who are you in relationship to specific person, who are you in relationship um, to friends and family, career, anything, right? Spirituality, um, personal life. Who are you in relation to all of that? Get clear on it. Because the more clear you are, you'll get to, you will live the life you want. All right. So do I get upset that I wasn't even in my 40s till I figured this out? No, I don't get upset about that. I mean, sure, I thought, why didn't this, why didn't I figure this out when I was in my 20s or when I was, my kids know, they're little kids, eight years old. And they're understanding what to think about and how to manifest. They understand how to visualize. <laughs> I think, okay, that's okay. I just look at the value. The value is I woke up. That that's the value. And now I'm un I know that I'm un unlimited and I know I could create what I want. So I don't go back in time wondering why. Sure, I might have done that, at, but, but move beyond that and see the value, see the value in, in realizing, you're realizing now that the thoughts matter. The thoughts you're having matter. Even the beliefs you hold matter and they manifest. Okay, um, hi love, he's coming back, he's madly in love. I feel but hasn't been in touch, what am I creating? Okay, he's coming back. Okay, well, I mean, it's not that that's a negative thing to say. He's coming back and, he, and he's madly in love. Okay, you're thinking from already having the desire. Then you're not thinking he's coming back. You're saying it's already done. Okay. He hasn't been in touch because you didn't get solid on this identity. Someone solid in the identity of the identity of you in the relationship that that person feels like important. That person validates their own feelings, um, validates themselves, validates their own worth, sees their own worth, sees their own value. Okay, so when you see your own worth and value, and you know you're important, and you know you're living a great life and you make a decision about that, that's part of the self-concept of a version of you having your desire. That version of you doesn't look at the world and think you're lacking. That, that version of you isn't looking and saying, but, but they're not in touch. The reason you're, you're feeling like, well, I mean, they're not in touch <laughs> because you're looking outside of you for potentially, right? <clears throat> one or all of these things or some of these things, right? You want the validation of that person. You want that person to value you. You want that person to, to tell you you're enough. 
but you have to do that for yourself. And you have to see yourself that way and be that version of you. As you consistently be that version of you, that version of you doesn't even, is not even like, it, the version of you, um, you know, if, if, if there was no, uh, if someone wasn't giving you their attention, that version of you, the version of you who knows that you're, you're enough and that you're valued and you validate yourself, would say, you know, to that person that doesn't get, it doesn't give you attention. <laughs> I'm going in circles. You would say, you would think about that person and be like, you don't wouldn't even give them the time of day. You don't give enough of uh, importance to think about them, to worry about them. You wouldn't be worried if somebody is talking to you. You'd be like, you're loss. You wouldn't care. You wouldn't take it personally. So keep your self-concept, affirmations, keep feeling the version of you, the version of you who's validating, the, that validates yourself and says, I am enough. That version of you is also, like this is the version of you in the relationship. Understand that person will shift as you shift because they're a reflection of you. As you shift, as, as the self, shifts, the world is shaping and forming around you. They must reflect the new version of you. And that version of you that feels like that, that feels like you, you are this person, is enjoying life. That version of you is enjoying life, not wondering what are you missing out on. That version of you makes a decision to create life. That version of you, I mean, maybe not all of these, I'm just giving ideas of like generally, right? That version of you would be fine in your own company. That version of you, you know, this is in relation to that relationship. That version of you would be doing something, you know, that you say this is good or like, I enjoy this. What should you do? Keep being that version of you who feels safe, secure, sure, validated, important, because you decide you are. Not because you need that person to tell you you are. Not because you're so focused on them and their life. You have to take your power back and put the focus on your own life. And as you do that, you become a magnet in your world. Yeah, and Shelley said, it all starts from within our inner world. Jillian, happy birthday. Um, I was going to look. What is today? The 12th. The 12th. I knew that. Um, February 12th. Happy birthday. I hope you're having an amazing day. All right. Heaven, do we ever need to think logically or is it just purely about manifesting? Yeah. You, you, yeah. You don't want to think logically. Um, um, manifest, someone who's a powerful manifester doesn't, not, doesn't think logically. I love that Neville Goddard always said, I am not a rational being or something like that. He would say something to that effect. Like, he's not rational, okay? He's not thinking logical. You become less and less of, of a logical thinker. Sure, I know that exists. It's not like I never put a spreadsheet together. It's not like I don't do my bills. It's not like, okay, so I think logically to some degree. But, I, but at the same time, I also know everything exists right now. Everything is existing. There are simultaneous realities happening now. There are infinite versions of you. Everything is happening right now. And I know, because I practiced enough to see this truth, I could see this in my reality as I focus on what I want I don't need to think logically. I just I just focus on being the person who has that desire. And I embody that desire. I embody the version of me with that desire. We're already doing this. You're already doing this, but you're manifesting a reality based on how you perceive reality. And if you perceive reality that it's hard and it's solid, and if you perceive reality that people don't change and you perceive reality uh, a certain linear way with time and space, then 
that then you're just creating that reality. You're creating the reality based on how you see reality, how you perceive it. It's all a perception. Jillian, you're so grateful for this community. I'm grateful for you. Lots of birthday wishes. Um, this is new. Not that it can't be done, but to think of the good is what I need to work on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, as it's the beginning of your journey, <laughs> or like beginning of realizing, the, the, key, the, the one key I'll tell you, if you could focus on the vision of what you do want instead of thinking about what you don't want. So that's like no more complaining, uh, no more arguing for your limitation. No more, there's no point to argue sometimes with people because they might have a limited viewpoint. <clears throat> so you stop thinking about what you don't want and you start thinking about what you do want and you embody what you do want. And you see the vision of you having and being the version of you with what you want. <laughs> hey, Caleb, how do you regret her losing you and wanting to be with you rather than someone else? I did reply to you on YouTube, okay? I want, I, I'm, I'm glad you're here because here's the thing. You can, okay, sure. We want someone to regret losing you it feels pretty good that you like I get it it's like you want her to feel like she regrets losing you but but look at a different perspective okay you're all, imagine you're already back together imagine you've already been back together for three months just because time doesn't really exist it's just our perception of time if you if it's you're already together in your mind you're just thinking about it you're already together for 3 months just imagine today going back 3 months and you got together and not, and it's just been going great and and you're having the time of your life it's like the best loving caring relationship you feel safe you feel good you feel very sure it feels good okay i want you to go there okay i know it's your reality but just think about it Go, to, go farther to the end of having that because you'll create that reality, reality quicker. You'll create, the, you'll create the reality. I mean, sure, she'll probably show you. Uh, like, she'll be showing you how much she appreciates and loves you, how much she cares about you, okay? But if you're focused on, if your end, if your focus is, I want her to regret losing me instead of being with someone else, okay? I mean... I'm not saying you can't get to where I was pointing out, but that's a that's a powerful end. The powerful end is go to the place you want to be and what you want to experience, because you can manifest your in your your life saying, well, I mean, <laughs> again, it's all perspective. You can manifest that she's saying, um, I always regret losing you. I always regret losing you. But, you know, if you've been together for three months, is she still going to be saying, I regret losing you? Ten years from now, or, you know, I don't know what your long-term perception is, right? But let's just say a year from now. Is that important for you to, for her to mention, I regret losing you? I get it. You want it, You want her to feel like you're, the, the, what you truly want to feel is your number one. You, that's what you want to feel. You want to feel like you're number one. You want to feel like you are always chosen. You want to feel like you are always wanted. Okay, then just go there. And, and you'll probably get that, that reflection. But don't focus on the regret losing. Okay, instead of focusing on regret, regret losing you, because you're still focusing on sh you not being together. That's focused on she's, you know, that lo losing each other. Okay. That's separateness. Think of being more together. Being together is like, you're together. You're, now, how, who are you? You're already together. You're already together for three months. Think from that, that place today, in the now moment, not just today, like in the now moment. If you've already been together for three months, feel that version of you who feels like, oh, 
I feel so loved. I feel so appreciated. It can be powerful to put your hand on your heart a little bit and like feel that. Like it's like a feeling, this love. Like I feel loved and appreciated. Okay, but the bigger picture is you don't want to condition your love and appreciation on someone because it's it's uh, that that's less stable. It doesn't mean you can't manifest that reality. You can, but you want to manifest a stable, solid relationship. Then you should be solid and stable, and you should feel wanted because you're no, because you decide you're wanted. So feel that. Just feel that. And I think that's a better place. Again, if we work together one on one, we would have a dialogue. And I would get a better understanding. From this place of giving my advice without knowing any details, stop focusing on the regret because you focused on it several times. And, and, and right, stop focusing there. Focus on already being, already having. You're focusing on regret losing. You don't want to be there. You want to be in the place of like, it's already done. I already feel it. Sure, I understand you want her to regret that. Okay, but it's going to be it's going to be a better solid relationship when you feel like I feel loved. I feel I love that I I feel loved. I love that I'm wanted. I am wanted because I know I am, because I know I'm good enough, because I know I'm amazing, because I know I'm infinite or attractive. I know I'm a great person. I know I'm a great catch. Those are, those are kind of like affirmations that you could think about yourself. I know what it feels like to have someone reject you, right? Most of us, many of us, maybe not all of us, but when someone rejects you, it doesn't feel good. You feel you could kind of feel, start to feel small. You could feel like unwanted. You're gonna feel unwanted. You feel like you're rejected. Why don't, is something wrong with me? Okay, so all of those thoughts create reality. If I'm in the state of still feeling rejected, if I'm in the state of still feeling rejected, my world's just gonna mirror how I feel and how I, and if I'm rejected, what am I, th who am I being? I'm being the person who's not chosen. I'm being the person who doesn't necessarily feel wanted. In order to create the reality and the experience you want, you wanna feel wanted. You decide that you're wanted. You decide it. Because your whole reality is, is a reflection of you. This is the game of life. It's like, now we have, imagine we're all playing the game of life and now we got some secrets. It's almost like we have the secret rules to the game of life that we didn't know about. And many people we already know in our life don't know about, right? Unless we've shared with them or they've also experienced, okay? So it's like you have extra rules to this game and these rules make you so unlimited. It's like we're literally like a superpower person. What is that? Superhero. <laughs> Super. You know what? I never saw Harry Potter and I just watched Harry Potter, the first one with my, my youngest um, last week. We watched the first season or the first episode of Harry Potter. And it's, it's literally like that, you guys. I'm a little behind in the game um, with movies, but it's like we're like a Harry Potter. It's like, did you know, many people have seen Harry Potter, so I'm just kind of assuming you have some general idea, right? It's it's like magic. We really, it's like we have magic. Okay, so we, we do have this, if, if, well, it's not magic, but we've always had this within us. We just didn't know. So when Harry Potter, that very first circumstance, so there was a snake and then that the stepbrother or, you know, like his cousin, and his cousin was looking at the snake and then Harry didn't even know. He did not he didn't know how to use the power. He was really powerful. Like Harry's like so identify yourself as the one who's really powerful now. We're really just learning how to hone in and adopt or or, or um implement. That's the word I'm looking for. We're learning how to implement it more deliberately. So so it's okay. Look at the big picture. It's all, it's okay. Why is it okay? Because even if we tried to do something and it didn't work, we get to try again and we could create that it does work. Try again, keep trying again. I affirm things. I didn't get it in the first day. I didn't quit though. I didn't say it's not working. 
I, I knew, number one, I could see I lost everything. So I was pretty determined in my mind to get the thing I want. I didn't have to work harder for it. I just needed to stay loyal in my mind. I had to keep a mental discipline and remind myself, okay, if I'm focused on not having it, that means I'm focused on a reality of not having. So if I want to have the reality and experience of this realization of this manifestation, then I need to keep affirming until I do have it. Okay, that that's one of the biggest keys because the 3D, you don't want to create based on the 3D. You create based on going to the end. Here we are, yeah. Okay, X reached out, told, told you that he misses you. That was all. I wanna get back with him, so how do I do? Okay, look, this is a perfect example of like from the last question about the regret, because, um, sorry, Caleb, I was going to say Kyle, Caleb, <clears throat> you, do you see how I described going to the end of what you truly want? Because what you truly want, I mean, you do want that, that, um, you know, it might feel nice to say, I regret that that ever happened. You don't even, at, at some point, that's not even going to be important to you. You won't even care about that, okay? The same thing with Monica. Why is it that um, he said he missed you? Because you've probably been affirming, he misses me, he misses me, or something to that effect, right? You're affirming that. You're, you were affirming for yourself and saying you're a goddess or whatever your affirmations were. Now he reflected that, okay? And then, and then that was all. Like, do we want to create that reality or do we want to create, now you go to the end. So what do you need to do, Monica? Keep persisting. You already did it once. You manifested that he says he misses you. The reason um, that was it was because something within you didn't feel sure and you didn't stay loyal to the identity of the version of you who's, who knows you're chosen. Okay, so consistently, I'm chosen or consistently say that. I'm chosen, I'm wanted. Not only does he miss me, now put the action step on it. What does that look like? He misses me and he loves to treat me, he shows me. He loves to tell me, he loves to be in my presence. Okay, so that's the story, okay? But that whole story about him comes from whoever you are, the self. So for him to miss you and tell you, you have to be the version of you. And, and the version of you, or the version of you who's already in that relationship, I mean, now you're not even saying, you're, if you're already in the relationship, you're not, um, I, I don't know if you were affirming he misses me, but you wouldn't be affirming that. So sh shift your affirmation to, I am loved and I'm adored and I'm treasured. I'm a priority. I think that's one of the powerful affirmations or you know like experiences experience you want is or an experience maybe not the only one but an experience you want is like you want to feel a priority in that person's life right you want to feel like you're really important like doesn't that feel good if you knew your person would drop something in an instant when you needed help if you got a flat tire that they would drop it all and say i'm there right now you did anything happened <laughs> okay we're not going to create we're not creating that because everything exists and we're not choosing that reality but we're choosing a reality where our specific person is right by our side i mean you know <laughs> not 24 7 but like that kind of person who is always there for you okay so now be that version of you that version of you knows that and feels that so feel that consistently you, f you start to feel it consistently by affirming it. Our affirmations absolutely manifest because affirmations will change your thoughts. And your the way you feel is because of whatever your thoughts and beliefs are. So you, you, change, you change your belief about being unwanted. Let's say your belief is I'm unwanted, I'm rejected. I mean, you, really, really, you would probably more think like I'm rejected, I got rejected. How does that feel? You feel a certain way. So to change that, you want to start feeling honored and wanted and pursued. What is, okay, so by affirming, I am pursued, I am wanted, I choose me. Create the perception that you choose you. You wouldn't, 
you wouldn't choose anyone else. You wouldn't even choose, if there's a third party, you wouldn't choose to be that third party. You choose to be you. And if you could say with more strong conviction that you choose to be you, you'll create the reality where your specific person chooses to want to be with you. So focus on yourself. Focus on feeling and being that person. And some of that could take a little bit of time. It doesn't mean it's going to take a long time. It could just take hours, you know. The truth is we can manifest instantly, but you're going to manifest instantly based on how you're seeing and perceiving yourself and perceiving the world and perceive, I mean, it's a bigger picture. It's how you perceive yourself in relation to this specific person. So you want to get so solid and secure that you're anchored that you're anchored even if you saw your person with someone else, even if your person didn't talk, you know, you didn't talk to them. So you have to be anchored. You are, you know, like what are other words? Think of words similar to anchored. Anchored is like solid, right? There's a big ship in the ocean, all the waves are going, but that ship is anchored, it's not moving. You are anchored, you're sturdy, you're solid, you're secure. Okay, so that's kind of like, how do you, how can you embody that yourself? I always would like, I would go, I was like, the dictionary is my friend. <laughs> Google is my friend. Synonyms, I would, if I wanted to feel something, I want to feel secure, I'm going to go to the computer, I'm going to go to my computer, I'm going to pull up synonyms of anchored. And now I'm going to look at every word and I'm going to, because, um, only so many words exist in the world, right? And I'm just trying to get that feeling. I'm trying to get that feeling by practicing it. And I could practice it by hearing different words and feeling that and imagining that. Okay, Charlie, I'm a, I'm a weekend and feel stagnant. Okay. You feel stagnant, but not, but you don't want to, you don't want to create that, that it, you know, so I'm a weekend and I, I'm hopeful. Our, our thoughts are also a choice. And it, but from the old programming, we just had old habits of thought. You wake up every day, have the similar, similar, thought, <laughs> similar thoughts, similar habits. So if you want to change your life, you have, to, you have to be more conscious. And being more conscious means you're choosing where you put your focus and where you put your attention and what you're assuming. So what you can, this is a conscious choice, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm in a week, uh, you know, like I'm a week in learning self-concept and learning manifestation and, and now instead of feeling stagnant, okay, I mean, that might be what you're seeing and feeling, but you, how do you shift away from that? Just start to say, I intend to feel hopeful. I'm going to set an intention that I see evidence. Okay, so that's putting your focus in the direction of you with your desire instead of you feeling stagnant, no movement, nothing happening, not working. Okay, it's a conscious choice. It is a choice. Stephanie, can we make like we're talking to our friends about how amazing our relationship has been? Yes, that is, um, that's an example of inner conversations, exactly. And that is like, if you want to say it's a technique, but that's, um, that is a technique. And Neville Goddard talks about that all the time. Create an imaginal scene. It, you know, you don't have to, the, it's just the affirmation. It's the thought, right? Create that imaginal thought, okay? That you're saying to your best friend or any friend, like, I am the luckiest girl in the world. I have the best boyfriend. I love my life or, you know, like you're going to get more specific. Okay. You could get, get more specific if you want. And what is your friend saying? Your friend is like, Oh my God, I love you guys are the greatest. You're such a cute couple. <laughs> right. Um, so it, you could create that, that kind of dialogue. All right. Um, even like I think the Neville Goddard examples would be like you imagine hearing people say congratulations, congratulations, you have an amazing, you know, if someone would be congratulating you on an engagement, if that's what your desire is, or 
that you're married and you're hearing the congratulations. <laughs> Patty, you have a lot, a lot of work to do. Okay, but you're just, just intend. I intend this is easy. I intend I'm really good at this. You're thinking from the version of you who is good at this, okay? So even though you're not, or you're not perceiving yourself to be, and even if you want to be, but you perceive yourself in this moment right now that you already are. Because if you're the cause, when you're a deliberate manifester, the, the, the number one understanding is you're the cause, the world's the effect. This is a new... It's a new concept. When you understand and know you're the cause, you're thinking from already having, already being, already being the version of you with this desire. It, when you're the cause and the world's the effect, you're going to say things to yourself like, I already am good at this. I know how to manifest a specific person. I am a master manifester. I'm brilliant at this. Okay, so that doesn't feel that natural to say that because we didn't walk around the world claiming something generally. <laughs> um, but that's how you get what you want. That's how you get what you want, by claiming it, by embodying it, by being that person who is that. Sonia, hello. You have a story. I've been, I've been wanting to work at the Veterans Hospital for years. And yesterday, I got it. I'm so grateful and blessed. S Sonia, congratulations. That's exciting. So look at that. Look at how powerful you are. And, and um, you're, M Monica, you were saying that um, you've, you're living together. And since you've been working on yourself, it's been rough. All right. I know it feels rough, but start saying, you, you really want to start perceiving it differently, okay? I'm working on myself and I know it must get better. Because really what we're saying is this, the story we're telling, the reason you're telling that story is because you feel that way. But as you feel that way, you just create that reality. This feels rough. It's tough. I'm trying, but it's tough. And, and, and it feels like a lot of work. But you don't want to create that kind of reality, right? So you're, you're, you, you're going to consciously choose to say, uh, okay, you could say, I mean, it's not like you can't say certain things. It's just more about what you're saying is creating your perception, is creating what you're, you're manifesting. So we live together. I'm working on myself. I intend this gets better. It must get better. The more I work on myself, I know it will get better. Look for success stories. Look for your own success stories. Not looking, but like observe and notice the successes that you have already. Okay, observe yourself, observe your thoughts, observe what's going on in your life, observe what people say to you, observe what strangers say to you, observe how people treat you, because all of that is coming from you. Um, Maria, do I recommend breath work? Do you think it can help in the journey? Absolutely. Breath work, I use breath work, I always found it to be really powerful. Because we already have a, a knowing and belief that breath work physiologically changes your body and calms your body, calms your nervous system. So breath work, you know, when we come from the place of feeling relaxed, it's you're going to have an easier time focusing on what you do want. The more that you could feel relaxed, it's going to be a powerful way uh, to be a deliberate manifester. Breath work, and in, in any way, I suggest... To my clients, if you're ever, let's say you're with your SP or you're ever in a situation where you feel like you're losing it, right? You're, you're going to, you're going to, um, you're triggered or, or you feel upset, you do some rhythmic breathing. So you're breathing in for six seconds, hold it for six seconds, breathing out for six seconds, and then you count to six. Breathe in six seconds, hold it six seconds. Breathe out for six seconds, and then you count to six seconds. And if you do that at least three to five times, you are already going to be changing the, your state within your physical body. Okay, so it, yeah, absolutely will help. And th that, that's not the only type of breathing technique. <clears throat> Um, you guys, for some of you that are new, I just saw watching the, pu the, the puppy bowl. Oh, fun. 
Um, if you're new here, I do have a free Facebook group. You can join the link in my bio. There's a free Facebook group. There's a community. You can you know, post your questions there, um, post your successes. More importantly, post successes, observe your successes. As you focus on success, you see more success in your life. I'm thinking about purchasing your self-concept course. Is it a vid video? How long is it? It's about 30. Well, the thing is, it's not like pages. It's it's 30 pages, but it's um, in a different format with the font is larger. So it's going to only take, you could finish it in one day, right? It is not, it's not in video form. It's in, it's in reading form. I have several exercises with that course. The exercises will help purge out the old thoughts and beliefs so you can adopt and maintain the new beliefs that you're holding. And I've had clients um, finish it in one or two days. I recommend to do it in about two days. Give yourself a little bit of time. And if you need to reread it and repeat it, but you're going to implement that course at least 30 days. You want to think what you do within the course now you're implementing it every single day until you have your desire, until you're living that experience that you want. My self-concept course, the link's also in my bio, Master Your Reality by Mastering Your Self-Concept, because that is really, it is the biggest key, like how you see yourself is transforming your world. People that don't even know that they're creating, um, when when you go into a place of self-love and that journey, let's say you have a breakup and then you go to this place of self-love, you change your life dramatically by focusing on yourself and loving yourself and going. So, it, so it's, it's um, focusing on self, self-love, self-concept, like not only that you love yourself, but who do you see yourself as? Are you the person who makes a lot of money or are you the person who's broke? because you could use that course for money. Um, are you the person in the relationship or are you the person that's trying to get the relationship? So, so it's, a, it's a mental practice to, to consistently be that version of you. And it's really, in a, in a way, it's not that hard. It's just more about being consistent. Maybe the hardest part is because the 3D reality feels so real because for our whole life, we assumed it was the cause. We, th we thought that the, the 3D was the cause when, it, when that's not true. What's true is you're the cause in your own reality. Yeah, that's where you're having trouble, but you also having fun with it, acting though as though you have it already. Perfect. It's, um, I manifested SP to feel disgusted by other women. <laughs> that's a big win for me. <laughs> oh, that's a, I, I haven't heard that one. That one's kind of fun. Now just keep, just stay secure, right? Um, stay secure in yourself that like there is no competition because there really is no competition. It's just a perception of competition. Anyway, congratulations on your big win. All right, and then you're seeing yourself as number one. You're seeing yourself as like the premium, the prize, first class, number one, the only one. Yeah, Hellstorm, Monica, do you wanna join my free Facebook group? Sally said, all we have is now, there's no past or future, P perfect. The power in the now, <laughs> right? The power of now is knowing that there is only this moment right now. So what are you thinking right now? Because if in the, the present moment now, you're thinking about what happened yesterday or last week or being ghosted, and you're thinking about how they hurt you, then that means in the present moment right now, if you're thinking about all that stuff, you're creating that. You're continuing to create the reality where you experience that which means if you feel like you're still hurt and feeling rejected and feeling not chosen and feeling unwanted, that means that your specific person must confirm, be doing something that confirms that. So that must mean that they are not contacting you. I mean, they must, it's, it's not that it means that, it's that's what's happening. They will be, that's how they will confirm in your reality, how you feel. 
so you're not using the 3D reality to determine whether or not you're you're chosen. You determine you are. You you decide you are. You guys, um, I do have to run. If you need additional help, I have so many ways to work with me. Look at the link in my description. Join my free Facebook group. I have a VIP, uh, VIP community. If you want to level up and you want to be the best version of yourself and level up, join my community for three days. It's a really powerful place to be. I have unpublished videos in that group. Uh, we have a great community. We have great success stories. And I love you all. You guys have a great day. Bye.